What's up guys, it's Tor on Tor HD Gaming here to bring you a guide on how to spec as your unholy death knight. I have transferred to a troll over on Storm Reaver US side, so if you're wondering where my human went, uh he's a troll now on Storm Reaver. I'm doing some PvE, getting ready to do some raiding. Uh, here's how my gear is coming along. I still have three four PvP pieces. Getting some of my raid finders set up. Uh, I got the legs, boots. Um, I ended up getting the weapon. I actually have uh, 390. They're not tier gear, but I have 390 shoulders, which isn't bad, and uh, 384 chest. The rest of it's uh, dungeon gear and PvP gear that I'm still trying to replace. But on your unholy death knight, how do we spec? Um, First, you're going to take 3 out of 3 in virulence just for a 30% damage increase. Very important. 3 out of 3 epidemic increases the duration so you don't have to worry about uh, festering strike unless you abs unless you have a blood and a frost rune. Then you want to use festering strike, but pretty much with that talent, your diseases will never run off the target. A point in desecration just because there's nothing better. I put 3 out of 3 in morbidity just to increase the damage of death coil buff of 15 and the death and decay buff of 30%. Uh, runic corruption reduces the cost of your death coil by 6 and then causes your runic empowerment ability to no longer refresh a depleted rune but instead to decrease the rune generation rate or increase excuse me, by 100%. Unholy Frenzy is like your little mini heroism for yourself or uh, you can actually give this to another person because some classes like feral druids benefit better from this than we do. Increases the damage of your diseases spread via pestilence by 100% from contagion. Very good. Makes our AoE insane. Shadow infusion grants the successful death coils a 100% chance to empower your active ghoul increasing its damage dealt by 6% and stacks up to 5 times. So we can give our pet like 30% more damage just by using Death Coil. Very nice. Magic Suppression turns your uh, anti-magic shield into a DPS cooldown in the way in a way that it uh, takes if you, pretty much what it does. It does the same thing, uh, protecting you from magic damage. But if you get hit by magic damage, your runic power bar instantly fills up like all 130 or 100 or however much you have, depending on your spec. It instantly fills up, and that's a lot more death cool. So what you'd want to do is when you know magic damage is coming up, get all your runes on cooldown, use all your runic power, pop your anti-magic shield, take the hit. Um, your The damage will be partially negated by the anti-magic shield, and you will get a full set of runic power to blow on that boss. Rage of Rivendare increases the damage of your Plague Strike, Scourge Strike, and Festering Strike abilities by 45%. Uh, pretty much essential. Unholy Blight is just a dot that you should take. It's not all that good anymore, but it's worth taking. Proved Unholy Presence is another 5% haste. Dark Transformation takes our 5 charges of Shadow Infusion and makes our ghoul go beast mode and all his abilities end up being enhanced. So that's something you have to take. I have it bound to shift 1 so it's very easy to get to. Anytime that pops, even on trash, you want to pop it because it's not a big cooldown. Like All it is is a rune. All, the big part is getting it to proc. Evan Plague Bringer, your Plague Strike, I see touch chains of ice and outbreak also infect the target with ebon plague which increases damage taken from your diseases by 30 percent and all damage taken by an additional eight percent very good for every situation sun doom your main hand auto attacks have a chance higher with rank two of course to make your next death coil cost no ring power so that's anytime you get your power aura here on the side that's what causes that to give you your free it's a free death coil pretty much summon gargoyle uh summons a gargoyle pretty much big dps increase what you want to be careful is say say this guy's my boss right here uh craven drock i'm dpsing him i'm all i'm going beast mode on him and then all of a sudden i want to pop my thing 
But if I pop it right here on top of him, the gargoyle is going to come down and he's going to start meleeing, which is a big DPS loss. So what I'd do is I'd be DPSing, and then I'd run over here real quick, pop it, and come back in. And that will help improve your DPS by quite a bit. Um, I made the mistake when I spec'd and took that uh, runic power mastery, which increased my runic power by 30. You can take this. This is a situational or more preference. 3 out of 3 in this, and then take 3 out of 3 in bladed armor for more uh, attack power. 1 in butchery, just because there's nowhere really else to put it. What you can do is take your 3 out of here, put another 1 in butchery, and put 2 in improved blood tap, and that will reduce the uh, cooldown by like 30 seconds. Very good. Guys, this is how you spec on your Unholy Death Knight. Be sure to like the video, thumbs up, favorite, subscribe to my channel, and uh, check out my videos on TGN World of Warcraft. Thanks for watching.